Okay, I've started the recording. Good afternoon. We have a great turnout. Thank you all very much for making time today. I just need to do a test to be sure that um, I'm being heard. So Chris, I'm just going to ask you to check that you can hear. Okay. And she will... Oh, Divya says I cannot hear. Mm. Okay. Hang on, everyone. We'll get there. Okay, I've got most everybody saying they can hear except Divya. <laughs> Thank you for responding and letting me know that. And as I said, we've got the recording going. Looks like the majority of people can hear, and Chris uh, Divya says she's having difficulty. I'll let you see if you can help her out. Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone for taking time today. We're going to get started and um, I like to do these periodic updates just to share some things that are happening and also to give an opportunity for you to ask some questions. So if you have some specific questions that you would like answered, I hope that you will make sure and put that in the chat box. Um, so we'll get started. On our agenda, the first thing that I wanted to visit a little bit about today is our Design for Learning program. Now, some of you might be very familiar with this. Some of you may have taken it. Design for Learning is a four-state effort. We work with Nebraska, South Dakota, Kansas, and we've pulled together our staff development people to create a course, five sessions long, that is offered online. And the idea is that we allow people an opportunity to, especially if they haven't had an education background, to just brush up their skills a little bit on how to teach class, how to plan that class, how to evaluate that class. Uh, what is some of the current adult education theory and tips that are best for us when we are working with our adult uh, populations? So that particular course, as you can see, just started January 24th is just um, just getting underway. We have several North Dakota people who are taking it. What I wanted you to know is that there is a possibility that we are going to make some changes and not offer design for learning, but possibly offer another course that is now available through Florida Extension. Florida has developed an online course which you completely do on your own. There's no interaction with any professionals. And it is a certification process. You will then become certified in adult education. And we were looking for some volunteers who might be interested in taking that course and giving us some good feedback. I've asked some of the specialists to see whether or not we could get a few volunteers to take the course. And now I'd like to put it out there to any FCS people who might be interested. And if you are, I'd sure love to hear from you. And I'll send you the entire course agenda, and you can take a look at it. It is a 15-session opportunity. Again, you do it all on your own, so it, how much time it takes you is entirely up to you. There's no set um, uh, timeline for it. And we would cover the cost of it, and in the end, you'd be certified. So if there's anyone interested in um, volunteering to to audit the class, so to speak, for us and give us some good feedback. Is this a good direction for us to go? I'd sure love to hear from you. And so that's the first thing I wanted to put out uh, to the group. Okay, and then the second thing is that we will be offering seven habits again. And I can't encourage you strongly enough. If you have not taken seven habits, please find time to go take seven habits. You notice the dates, and what we're doing is we are offering it in conjunction with the support staff conference that takes place this spring. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday until noon will be seven habits, and then at one o'clock on Wednesday, the support staff conference starts. Um, we are opening it up to anyone, doesn't have to be only for support staff, but we have invited support staff if they are okay to be gone for the week and if this is something they're interested in, we've offered it for them as well. The maximum number we can take is about 25 people and I know there are 12 signed up already. So I would strongly encourage each of you to give this some serious thought. Check your calendars. And if you have not taken it and have an interest, um, please contact Jody and get on um, the list. I have a link here for registering. And I know you're not able to um, click onto that on your computers and make that work as a live link. 
Um, so you may want to just jot that down if you are sure that you want to do this and you can register. But don't be afraid to contact me or Jody later. We'll send you the information, send you the link, etc. So I just wanted to encourage everyone to give some thought to the Seven Habits program. And I guess I'll just take one second. Um, okay. Stacy just added... Uh, comment. It's also the same week as the North Dakota Academy of Nutrition Dietetics Nutrition Council Conference in Fargo as well. Well, that's not convenient, is it? <laughs> well, we did it that way because of the support staff conference. And so, Stacy, thank you for pointing that out so people who are planning to attend that may have to think twice. We will offer seven habits again. But uh, again, if this is convenient for you and you are free and available, please um, take some time to think about being involved in that. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, very briefly, oh, I have a message. 26 are now signed up. Wow. Okay. Chris just came in and told me that we now have 26 signed up. You can continue to sign up. We've decided that if, it, if we go way over the 25, we'd maybe offer two sections or um, work with it that way. So if you're interested, just sign up, and we will... Um, uh, work with you to see to it that you get to take it. All right. Well, that was an update <laughs> that I am surprised about. So great. Glad to hear that. Okay. So the next thing I wanted to do, and it's not on the list here, but it's something that I am so happy that I can share with you. I'm not sure how many of you saw the emails or have been following the emails, but um, we've been having quite a time with our um, uh, Congress regarding our support for SNAP-Ed and our FNP program. And I am just absolutely so happy to be able to tell you that uh, we recently saw both sides um, pass a bill which allows us to be restored to the original cuts that they were going to that they were going to ask all snap ed to make um, you may or may not be aware but there were some additional major cuts made with the sequestration and so forth and so we were quite nervous that they might not restore that and they did the good news is that means that our program is okay in North Dakota as we are today and that is extremely good news now we knew all along that there would be regular or a certain percentage of cuts every year that we had to meet up through the year uh, 2017 and we're on course to do that with natural attrition and so forth but um, this would have been a real difficult thing for us and thankfully we have avoided that particular problem so bottom line good news our FNP program funding is okay and um, things should be able to remain as they are. Anybody who has any questions about uh, FNP, since that's a relatively new thing and I didn't have it on the agenda for today, uh, you may or may not have heard much about that. If you have some questions, just go ahead and enter them into the chat box. Okay. The next thing that I just wanted to share with you is a little bit about our whole evaluation process and some updates that we have made, and I mean just very recently made. Um, the Design for Learning course has the fifth session devoted to evaluation. And during that course, we teach about the four levels of evaluation, and we ask each of the participants to take the program they've designed and now put together an evaluation tool and that happens to be the unit that I teach and so then I take all of those tools and we critique them together and we look at how we can make those tools stronger how we can strengthen the evaluation so it's a very important um, final part to our design for learning course well during the last several months we've made a decision to do some major revamping with how that's taught and all of those tools are now available for you as well whether you take design for learning or not and we have placed them on our evaluation web page and so I am going to now just shift over, hang in there with me one minute, shift over to the next screen. Okay. 
All right, so I am hoping that I shifted it over and um, would Chris, would you just chat in the chat box put if indeed that you can now see that screen? No? I'm showing the primary screen. It looks like it's working. Okay. I just like to be sure everyone is seeing what I am seeing. And then right now I'm looking at our evaluation page on our website. It's there, Chris tells me. Okay, this is good news. All right, everybody. So this is our um, evaluation website. And the top part is just as it has been. But I want you to do, pay attention right here where it says um, the self-study. So if everyone can see this, self-study, evaluating extension programs. The following clips were recorded by Dr. Myron and Amy, and each recording you can review separately if you would like. And for the people who are taking Design for Learning, this is their homework. If you watch all of those recordings, it takes about 20 some minutes, almost 30 minutes. And so in a half an hour, you're able to get a really good overview of the different levels of evaluation and how we evaluate programming in extension and why we evaluate it the way we do. Then the piece that we've added are some sample questions for each level. If you're doing a level one evaluation, then your questions are at a satisfaction level or a reaction level. And here are some sample questions that you could use. And so um, we've tried to put together the tools that you'll need for each of the levels so that you can then take a look at your program and say, all right, I'll try this, I'll try that. Um, down here where it says Assessing Learning Outcomes, Design for Learning, that's the actual PowerPoint I use when I'm teaching this section for Design for Learning. And it's not a necessity that you go through that, but if indeed you're interested in taking maybe a half hour one day and let's see if I can kind of get a little bit of a refresher or a re update on evaluation. This would be the place to go. Here are the materials you would need. And then, of course, at NDSU Extension, not the other states I'm working with, um, we ask that you all write an impact report. And so here um, is a brand new recording, which was done by Ron Wiederholt, on writing an impact report and how to try to beef that impact report up and have good feedback, good anecdotal support, etc. So this is new and I wanted you to all be aware uh, that it existed. Anyone who has any questions on the evaluation um, and impact report information? Okay. Then I'm going to go back to my original screen. Hang in there with me, everyone. That didn't work. <laughs> Hold on. That didn't work at all. There we go. No, it was up there, wasn't it? Hmm. Can you tell this is the first time I'm doing this? <laughs> All right, great. I see no other comments or questions on evaluation and impact reports, so now you know that, what that is and that that's available. But here's the question for all of you listening today. We're interested in putting together just a small little team of people who would like to assist with evaluation and impact reports. We're looking for a couple of county staff who might be willing to serve on a small team that um, digs in just a little bit to this so that if there are other county staff out there who are 
um, needing support and I'm not available. We've got a few other people. Obviously, your district director is able to do this as well, but we're just trying to grow the resources that are available re um, related to this. So if there is anyone interested in um, working on that and, and taking on a little bit of a, a role here with um, helping others in your district, for example, I'd sure appreciate hearing about that, and you can just let me know. Okay, so the next thing, package programs. Um, you might all be waiting and wondering and wanting to hear about what are the package programs. And I'm going to bring that list up for you. We did send a list of titles out. And hang on one second. All right, it's loading. Hopefully you all received a copy of it. But here is the list of the package programs that we will be um, using for the upcoming year. Has everyone received the list? And now um, I'm missing that everybody raise your hand thing that we used to have on the old WIMBA se um, sessions. But um, at this point, maybe I'll ask the reverse question. Is there anyone who has not seen this list? Okay, we've got a couple. All right. We just recently sent it out, but I see there are a few people that um, have not seen it. So uh, what we'll do when this session is over is we will resend this list out of all the different um, package programs that will be coming for this next year. So actually, it's attached to this um, training here, or this webinar. So you can download it from here because we have it attached. You are correct. We did attach it. OK, so let's let's shift back out of this screen. Hmm. We have a different version, 2013 link. So ours is in a different place. It's at the bottom. You would um, click on the presentation screen, and then there's um, attachment tab that you click on. And I believe on the old version, it's on the right upper right-hand corner. Um, I believe it has an attachment. But I'm not 100% sure because I don't have that version anymore. On your screen in front of you are the titles of them now listed here. And again, um, if you can see the attachment and download it, great but we will send this out right after our session today, so you will get it one way or the other. And so that tells you a little bit more about your package programs that you can expect for the upcoming year. Any questions? OK. Next on our list, just a couple of brief comments about our SBEAR um, update. Um, the SBEAR group is in the process of going through all of the different requests that have been made of them, and all of the testimony has been provided. They have their list of all of the needs that have been presented. They have done some scoring. They have not done um, completed the ranking, but they meet again February 11th. And um, it's possible that after that meeting, we'll see a little bit more where we stand with rankings and so forth. Um, I think I shared with you in the past that we were going to bring forward, and we did bring forward, the concept of a joint request to do uh, more secession planning, transition planning work in the state. And that's a joint between ANR and FCS. And the next one that we brought forward was related to food and nutrition, the idea of having more um, uh, people to work in the food nutrition area out in the state. And so that did go forward. And we also had at, uh, a request, not that came formally through our efforts, but there was a request that did come forward through Senator Mathern to list the PRC work to be on the um, listing. And so we did do that. So we'll see how this turns out. We'll see where this goes. Um, I will keep you informed more after, as the process goes along. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so then, next on our list, counting news and sharing time. I wanted to provide some time for county staff to give any input that they might like to give. And so at this time, Molly, are you on? I wasn't able to reach Molly this morning, so I wasn't 100% sure if she was going to be able to be on because I think they may have been, their offices may have closed down due to weather today. So that's kind of what I was thinking, that she's not on. Okay, we're going to go ahead and I'll explain to you what Molly has done. Molly has some uh, had a program that she did, or I should call it an activity she did with a program that was called the Change Curve and was all about change. It's brief. It was a great activity. You could use it in just a number of different meetings and sessions. And so Molly went to the work to put it together as a publication with a card that is given to participants about the change curve, how we adjust to change, the stages that we go through. There are six stages that we go through when we are adjusting to change. And so I know that, um, in fact, these were just delivered to me this morning. I know the camera situation is not ideal to see anything close up, but you can watch in your county mailboxes. We're going to be counting these out, and we're going to send, we have permission to reprint without any cost, enough to give each county person 10 of these and each PRC person 10 of these. So we will be putting these in the county boxes um, uh, this next week. And you'll be able to very easily catch on to the activity. And then this card, you just have to take and cut it apart into four cards, uh, this particular sheet. And you can make more copies of them as you need them. But we were only given permission to do 50 of these, or excuse me, um, 10 of these per individual. So we're going to send these out to you. It's an extra activity that might be of interest to you to build into some of your meetings. And if you have any questions, you call Molly Sobe and of course you can use it and thank Molly Sobe for taking the time to do that. And the reason I wanted to share this one is first it's great, you'll enjoy it, but second of all it's an example of how you may come across something that you really like, really enjoy, and you can turn it into something that becomes a sharing item for the rest of the counties. So I strongly encourage you to do that and uh, see whether or not um, you know there's some great new activity or some great new lesson that you've done that you'd like to share. When we do that, we do make you go through the process of getting the permission to share and, and, and to do it like any other publication that we would do here. But um, it's, a, it's a great way for you all to share the best of what you find with each other. So Molly kicked it off for us this time. And I'm just going to stop for a second and ask if there's anybody else on the, uh, the call today who has anything else that they'd like to share that's going on in their counties or any of their activities. Any good news? Any any project that's just taken off like wildfire? <laughs> okay, I'm watching the chat box just in case there's something. Okay. Janet. Janet has chimed in. And Janet, I don't know if you want to unmute your phone and or if you would like to go ahead and share. Yeah, I can go and do that. Um, Julie Gardner Robinson set up a grant opportunity for the Western Rural Counties to offer this Nourishing Boomers and Beyond where we're teaching monthly lessons based off her nourishing curriculum every month from January to September to different groups in our communities. So I know I did my first class to, I believe, nine participants last week, and I got another one next week. So Great. Where are you doing it, Janet? Um, right now, just in our county building, and I did homemakers group last week, and then I opened it to the public to see if I can't get sign up just for a public class next week. Great. Great. Thanks for sharing. That's a program that I, I know, as you said, several counties are involved in. Something new, a little different. Great to hear it's kicked off. Donna, 
She's offering stepping on again. How's that going, Donna? We're just gearing up right now in advertising, so we're just starting out again. Okay. Great. And yes, by the way, Grand Forks offices were closed today. <laughs> um, Ellen B. Ellen. Well, we had the opportunity this morning to share with uh, Norm McLeod from Senator Heitkamp's office here in Minot a little bit about our programming across our disciplines. Um, he's just learning what kind of resources are available to Senator Heitkamp's constituents, and so he decided to meet with us. It was a really good meeting. Great, great. Always good to keep connected to our decision makers, that's for sure. All right, Cindy, that looks like fun. <laughs> Cindy, I'm not sure if you can get your mute off your phone. Yep, I just did. Great, yeah, we're great. excited about we're excited to have that happening here. Yeah, four or five commissioners registering. Mm -hmm. That's that's a pretty good turnout, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, Crystal Sonneman is coming in to do the program for us tomorrow. Perfect. That's, yep. That's great. That whole area, um, using our um, financial, certified financial trainers, et cetera, you know, you, that whole area and building in the succession planning, like I said, which we're working toward now, is an area of growth for us. And so having several of you get out there and offer these things and uh, help us to grow that program area is much appreciated. So looks good. Okay. Well, it's it's it is possible for us even though we're not in the same room at the same time to do this kind of sharing and it is possible for us to provide a little spark of energy and some new ideas in just those few minutes um uh, to the rest of us as to things that we might want to try to get involved in. So that's the purpose of the sharing time. And I'm just checking to see if there's anyone else in the chat box with anything else you'd like to share. So keep in mind for the future, whether it's something that you have used and you really want to share with other people because it's a great activity, we can do that, or whether it's just quick updates on programming and or tips and, and clues and things that are going well. That's what I mean by county news and sharing time. And uh, let's see if we can keep that up in, the, in our future connections. All right, so now we'll move on to state news and sharing time. And um, first of all, and I see Lori Sharmer is on, and I know Kim was unable to be on, so um, I'm not sure, Lori, if you were going to mention anything uh, related to the workshop coming up, our family economics group, as well as the Jumpstart Coalition training. Um, any other information, registration up for that, Lori? Hi, this is Lori. Um, at this point, we just have the date set. Uh, we know that it will be in Bismarck, and uh, we aren't even real sure where in Bismarck yet. Um, Vanessa is helping us with that. So save the date. Uh, more information will be coming. Definitely save the date, folks, so that you can see where that particular program update will be taking place. Um, and then I think a message went out, um, and I... I'm asking you to, if you didn't see it, to take a look, go back and take a look for um, a summary email from Abby Gold dated January 14th. And you will notice that um, they're talking about doing a food preservation workshop again this summer. They don't have a date yet. And then she has an update on some of the other program team um, tidbits. So I, I'm just going to, rather than repeat them all, she sent a great email out. Um, just going to ask you to refer to that. Um, Dina Kemet. Thank you, Dina. Dina just put a reminder in the chat box that state training for stepping on is March 3rd through 5th in Bismarck. If there's anyone else who is interested in becoming a trainer for stepping on, uh, those are the dates. And Dina, I assume that um, if they're interested, they let you or Jane know. Am I correct? We'll go with that. <laughs> oh, Diana Reed at the health department. Okay. Very good. 
I'm sure if anyone wants to know more about what that is, how that works, the kinds of connections that this is making with our aging population, you can talk to Dina and Jane, and maybe you'd like to become trained to bring that program to your area. So um, I could be wrong, but it seems to me too, Dina, that um, they have money to do another round of training here in March, but we're not sure there'll be additional money to do training after that. And so no guarantees, we hope so, but uh, at this point, we are fully funded this time. Okay. Yep, it will not cost a thing to, to extension. So please keep that in mind, and if you're at all interested, go and check it out. All right. Next on the list, uh, child care clinics. A report from Kim Bushaw, and Kim was unable to get in today um, due to the weather, so I can give you just a quick update there. Uh, a while back, we had some of our county um, staff ask the question about, you know, who does babysitting education clinics? Who does those clinics out there? And and um, what kind of curriculum are you using? And so forth. And we had a really good discussion about this. There's a, for me personally, I like the idea of calling it a child care clinic. I think it's um, much more professional and it is what it is. We are taking care of children. and. So the, that used to be done with a program through the Red Cross in some areas. Um, in some areas, there are public health nurses who work on that. In some areas, Extension were, was taking lead. You know, there's just a variety. Uh, 4-H groups sometimes will offer those sorts of things. There's a variety of ways that this, this can be offered. So we decided to dig in a little bit, take a look at some of the curricula that's out there. What is some of the best information, the best updated materials? And Kim went through this and uh, came up with a couple of options. And what we decided is that she would order them and send them to each of the PRCs. And that way they are located in a spot within each region. If this is something that is called for in your region and you'd like to know more and you'd like to see the materials and so forth, you can either visit with Kim, ask her as many questions as you like, or you can talk to the PRC staff and ask to review the materials that were sent out. Um, I think one thing we have to be careful of is that um, we have to be certain that we are um, offering this with the knowledge that we need to be very careful about safety and um, legal issues and so forth. So th there is a, a need to make sure that if you've never done this before, have a visit with someone like Kim or other people who have um, offered this particular workshop. Make sure you're using current materials. So if you've got old materials sitting in your office somewhere, get rid of them and give this uh, dusting off and um, uh, bring things up to date. So that's what that one is about. And without Kim online, um, I think that's as much as I'll say today. And again, feel free to give Kim a call if you've got more questions. All right. Next one is really kind of interesting. FCS teacher request and sharing materials. We've been asked to give some consideration to providing more in-service education for FCS teachers across the state. Now, I know that a lot of you may have very good working relationships with FCS teachers in your area, and you may be sharing materials and so forth, and that's great. Um, what's happening from a state perspective is Vicki Newharth, who directs the program at the state level in uh, DPI, Vicki Newharth is, um, has for years asked Julie Garden-Robinson to come and do training with their staff er at their August reach um, update that happens every year. Okay, so Julie's been doing that, and that's great. Well. There's an interest in getting more in-service in some other areas, such as financial education. Uh, gerontology came up. And so we're talking about having more of our specialists provide more in-service training to the FCS teachers. There's two things happening. One, they would like that for credit. And so it is possible that this summer we will host a little FCS institute, if you will, where teachers will be able to come and get credit and uh, do so in by digging in in a little more depth to an area, whether it be food and nutrition, whether it be financial education. We haven't worked out the details yet, but we're in a, we're in a discussion stage right now. The second thing is, we took a look at all of those package programs that we do for you every year. And we, our feedback amongst ourselves, our discussion amongst ourselves, is that it would be really great if we could give you the package programs for the new year and you have a year to use them. 
And then the second year, they're no longer considered brand new to you, but we go back and we look at some of the most popular ones and we tweak it slightly and make it available to the FCS teachers to use in their classrooms. So we're not creating anything new, but we are sharing our materials as a second wave, so to speak, with FCS teachers. So those two things are being discussed, taking our package programs that are at least one year old, repackaging them for FCS teachers, and doing some type of a little summer institute where they can get credit for an in-service. That's our discussion right now. And I wanted to bring this to your attention because I am sure that um, there will be all sorts of different levels of relationships out there. Some of you who maybe work so closely with your FCS teachers that you're sharing everything right now. Some of you who maybe don't do as much of that. So I want to make sure that if there's anything from this discussion that concerns you or excites you, that you share that with us so we have that in the mix because we've not decided anything yet, but in the next month or so we'll be making some decisions. So I'm looking on the chat box and Cindy wrote, years ago SDSU offered current trends as a two to three day FCS update for teachers. Uh, that's the, the concept, Cindy. That's the idea. Um, they, they could sign up for coming for one, two, I don't know if we'll do three days, but we're talking about two days right now and at least one credit then. Um, you need 15 hours for one credit. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, is there anyone else who has any concerns or sees some great potential that you want to point out related to FCS teacher collaboration? Okay, I don't see anything else in the chat box, but if anyone has any other feedback, please feel free to email us and uh, let me know now. Don't let me know after we do this. <laughs> um, we want to make sure that if there's um, anything that we're not thinking of that you're letting us know. Um, Ellen, thank you. I like, you like the idea, they like our materials, it's another outlet, exactly. It's exactly what we're kind of thinking. We don't see a lot of negative to it, but again, this is the time to chime in. So, um, Vanessa, North Dakota Jumpstart may be interested in helping offer. You're absolutely right, Vanessa. In fact, um, Lori has already, uh, and I have already visited briefly about if that's the angle they want to take, that that is the group that we would absolutely turn to to have help organize that. So, yep. And how nice to be able to connect Jumpstart to the teachers as well. So um, I think it's a win-win for all of us. We haven't come up with too many negatives other than the fact that we want to make sure that you're all comfortable that we are teaching mater sharing materials that typically have only been given to you. Okay. Uh, next on the list, plans of work process review. I guess all I wanted to do today was share with you that, you know, this year was sort of the culmination of our two-year process of making changes as to how we do our plans of work and our program teams, updating them, getting people on the right teams, um, having those teams meet more than just once a year at conference, um, having those teams be more in, in, in the lead in terms of our programs and developing them. So if you feel that at this point something didn't work as smoothly as you had hoped. I don't want us to wait till next fall. I want you to let me know now what worked or what didn't work. Um, if anyone, again, wants to share now, great. If that's a separate email, great. But I wanted to provide an opportunity for some feedback now. Um, plans of work are due or have been due now, and you all had a chance to use that new form. How did that work for you? Um, Okay, Ellen says it's been messy. Ellen, do you want to chime in here, turn off your mute, and tell us what you mean? Well, I guess what I mean by that is when we go to write our county plans of work, in the past we've been able to rely on a situation statement that was fairly concise and consistent that we could use from the state plan of work. Uh, obviously, we adapted what we did related to that situation for our counties, but this year we all basically had to create our own. There was nothing consistent for us to use. I don't know if that makes sense, but that was one of the things we ran into with our FCS staff here in Ward. We're like, we don't have anything to rely upon. 
so they're all going to look different and maybe that's not an issue but it, it seemed like it should have been consistent okay well let me just give you a couple thoughts on that first of all um, when you're talking about doing your plan of work and you'll notice we, we, we purposefully made a major change to say we wanted to know what the teaching role was. Um, we wanted to have more emphasis on, on, on you know, what was the role that you had in actually teaching and what, was, what, are, the key, what are the key needs in your county and, and what programs do you think best fit those needs. So you're right, we didn't emphasize giving a template of wording, statements, etc. Um, we did leave it more in your hands. As far as taking a situation statement, though, from if you used a signature program, signature programs all had action plans posted, and you could have taken anything from there. Um, if you're thinking that on our core programs that we should have had action plans posted, so you had a signature statement available, would that have helped, or am I missing something? Yes, that's exactly what I was meaning. Um, the signature programs we didn't need it for, but the core programs we did, and there wasn't anything to rely upon. Okay. We can sure work toward adding um, situation statements and so forth. I'm making a note. And that's something that we can build for next year. Um, so I can see where, you know, you're, you're used to always having that in front of you, so it maybe caused a little bit of concern, but we were, uh, we're really trying to get away from formality forms that anybody can copy. I mean, anybody, if I put a situation statement down and you all copy it down, that, that's not telling me a whole lot new. We're really trying to get into more um, understanding of what are the big needs out there and how, what programs do you think will suit those needs. And so... Yeah, that was that. That's where it originated, Ellen. But I do see what you're saying, and that is something we can add. Carla, Carla, would you like to chime in? Well, I just thought it was easier to do this year. It wasn't as much work. I, I guess I was maybe I did it wrong. I don't know, but <laughs> I thought it went okay. First off, you had the signature ones done, so all you had to do was print those, and so then you had had three left to go with. And um, they were easy, I thought, to write up. Well, one thing that you said, Carla, is exactly what we wanted it to be. We wanted it to be easier. Now, you oh. maybe found it easier and some people maybe didn't, but that was a goal. <laughs> we wanted it to be easier and just a little bit more realistic. Um, you know, sometimes when you do formal reports, you, you were so used to writing this 10-page document to say something you could say in two paragraphs. We, we wanted this to be simple and concise, and so um, I'm glad to hear that in, from your perspective that there was a little bit of ease to it. That's, that's encouraging. Maybe we're sort of on the right track. I don't have a problem at all with your comment, though, Ellen, about you know offering a few more things like more situation statements for the core program, so that's all fine. Um, oh, Molly just joined. Hi, Molly. Can okay. you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I apologize for being late. No problem. Um, and Molly, just so you know, we did kind of breeze over already the activity that you put together. But okay. at the at the end, um, I'll let you make a few other comments about it, okay? Okay. Great. Anyone else as far as plan of work? Let me, let me ask you a slightly different question. Um, is there anyone who doesn't feel that they are connected to a team yet, other than someone who's brand new? <laughs> I mean, I, how, do you feel like you are connected to a team where you want to be? And, um, you know, that kind of went through a process this year where we made sure the DDs were in support of the teams that you were on. It's not just everybody picking whatever they want here and there, helter-skelter. We wanted it to be a little bit more um, controlled, so to speak, so that if you're on a team, we're going to be expecting you to do something on that team not just be on 10 teams. Um, so, um, yep, Janet, that's right. <laughs> You're probably not totally connected yet. That's okay. You're still very, very new. Um, Ellen said, can you add yourselves to other teams? If you want to be someone who's on the listserv, just sort of as a voyeur out there watching and seeing if anything goes out when it goes out, you can do that. You add yourself. There's a line on the page where it says, 
sign up for the listserv here. But as far as working on a team, we hope that that was vetted between you and your district director and you are on that team because you will now be working on that team. Does that make sense, Ellen? Yes, it was just that when Abby sent out that last email about the teams within food and nutrition, I wasn't even aware there were some of those breakouts. And so there was one in there I was very interested in being a part of, was not aware of. Uh, I mean, I'm on the listserv, but I would like to be on one of those subcommittees. Okay. Then if you are already on the food and nutrition team somewhere and you'd like to be on a specific subcommittee, then you just need to let Abby or Julie or Stacy or somebody know, okay? And um, and within the team, you can move around and be on different subcommittees. If you've never been put on the food and nutrition team, that was where we wanted to have people have discussions with their district director. And the reason is because someone like you, Ellen, who've been, who's been here a little while, I mean, we're, we're not so concerned about, you know, being on two different teams, but um, someone who's relatively new, we want to make sure that they don't get spread out too thin. And so, uh, because we are expecting these to be working teams as we move forward. So I hope that helps, Ellen, and if you need to, you just um, let them know. But when that email came out from Abby, I also need to say that um, it's just not a free-for-all anymore. You know, you don't just say, oh, yeah, sign me up. We want to make sure that your district director is aware of the teams that you're on. And um, that way, now let's look at the next comment that Stacy uh, Wang put in here. She said, the marketing and technology team is super awesome and always looking for new and motivated members. I know that team has been working and has been meeting, and I know they're doing communication camps within a lot of the food nutrition teams, and that's getting those guys going. But you see what it's doing is it's leading to the team developing some projects and um, and, and, and programs and giving feedback as to how we integrate technology and so forth. I mean, we, we truly want those people active and working. So if, whether it's Ellen B. Ellen or Janet as a new person, if you're trying to participate in four teams, that's going to be too much. We want to make sure that we're a little more controlled this time, and that's why we're asking you to do that in conjunction um, with, the, with your DD. Make sure you don't spread yourself too thin. So if you saw the list of teams Food Nutrition has, and if you, um, um, I think the next update from the HDFS team um, is coming up next week, maybe. I can't remember the exact date, but I know it's coming soon. Um, as you listen in on their program planning team calls, and, and most of them are doing quarterly calls or links, um, I suppose I should call them link meetings, um, this is where you're going to see this grow and develop, and we hope you'll continue to um, work with them. I think in the past we saw a little too much of where um, people thought their role on the team was to say, here's what we need, and then they were done. And now we're saying, no, we really want more involvement from the team members. If we're going to get into social media, how should we do that? What direction should we go? Learn to do it so that you can use the social media, etc. So hope that makes some sense. All right, then I just wanted to add one thing that isn't on our list too, and it's related to the kids count. I sent an email out to everybody just yesterday, or I forwarded an email just yesterday. Uh, kids count and North Dakota Compass, two projects. If you're not familiar with them, I hope that that email enticed you to go and take a look at the website at the very least. What's really fascinating, and I'm going to try to um, uh, create a webinar for all of you to attend that the Karen Olson, who's in charge of this project at Compass, that she offers for you in the near future here. What's really cool is they now have an opportunity where you can really put an issue into the system and have them customize data from your county, even, that will apply to that issue and give you some data so if you're looking at needs assessment or you're sitting on a committee or you're writing a grant or whatever, you can get at some really great data, much more um, specialized and very quickly. And so this new Compass system has a lot of community building tools. Um, there's a community building toolkit even. I, I just wanted you to be aware that it's not just the traditional kids count book you've all been looking at all these years. There's more 
there. And this new Compass project has been quite fascinating. So I am working with Karen Olson to put on a link meeting to introduce you to the system, how you can go in and get this kind of data, how you can use it, what that toolkit looks like. So you can watch for that in the future. And if you see that, just know that that is brand new. This is not something that you've all seen before. And um, hopefully you'll be able to participate. The nice thing about the link meetings is if you can't participate, we record them. And hopefully you can go back and watch uh, when, you, when you do have time. OK, so that was the kids count piece that I wanted to share with you. I'm going to now just first open it up and say, is there anyone who has any specific questions that you would like to ask of me? Deb? Yes. This is Cindy. I'm just wondering, early in this call you talked about um, Design for Learning, Seven Habits, and then the 15-session self-paced program out of Florida. Correct. And you said you become certified. Certified in what? Adult education. OK. OK. Yeah. Sorry. And I can, I can send that. I'll make a note, too. I can send that um, outline. As long as I'm going to send out the package programs, I'll include the outline in an email. And um, and you can anyone can take a look at it and see if it's of interest. Um, right now, I'm just looking for at least one person, maybe two, who's willing to test it for us. We, okay, just, we, we need to give it a test run. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Deb, this is Lori. Yes. Um, I just had one thing I'd like to share with the group. Um, our NEAFCS Association had created an FCS promotion committee um, to kind of work with a, a very nice brochure on the FCS that we have. And so the committee has been working and, and meeting, and uh, we're now working on a presentation that can be used to go along with that brochure. Uh, whether it's two commissioners or two legislators. Um, and um, Cindy um, Leprich had put together a, a PowerPoint. And so we're taking her PowerPoint and kind of um, working it and getting it to look kind of like the brochure. So just wanted others to know that that's something that will be coming um, fairly soon. Great. Great, great idea to extend the, the work that went into the brochure. We may find other ways to use it. I noticed in Chris Borboom's message um, a little, oh, it's a few weeks ago now, where he was talking about the number of counties that have had their legislative updates so far, and um, of course encouraging the rest to do so. Um, I'm hoping that all of you are including that publication as a handout when you have your legislative updates. Uh, at the very least, that, that would be a great uh, handout. OK, any other questions for me or comments? Yes, Acacia just asked about sending the link out to the recording. You bet. Everyone will get a uh, message about how to access the recording. OK. All right, if there are no other questions for me, then I'm going to um, just quickly go back to Molly. And Molly, what I told them was just briefly about the activity that you came up with and tried, and then um, that you have turned it into something for them. There will be 10. They just arrived this morning, Molly, uh, up here. Yeah. So I have them. And um, there will be about 10 per FCS agent and PRC person that we will send out along with, um, and the remainder of them will be in Molly's hands. Uh, and, and we printed the maximum that they allowed us permission to do. So it's on yellow paper. It uh, kind of looks like this. It's looking great. And Molly, would you like to share a little bit about, um, you know, maybe even just 
the process of turning this into something to share across the state versus using it in, for yourself? Okay. Thank you, Deb. When I started working on this change activity was after Deb's retreat that she had that we could personally attend if we wanted to off work time. And it was really a, a fabulous experience. And I did this change activity. It's one that we used at um, All True, where I worked for 25 years, to talk about the corporate changes that were, we were going through when we implemented self-directed work teams and focused care, which were huge organizational initiatives that we did at All True. This change activity can be used in all kinds of situations. I used it when I taught a confirmation class with a bunch of kids. And really, it, it helps people understand the stages that most people go through. Not everybody goes through these, but that most people go through during change. It's kind of a fun activity to do if you had a chance to participate in it. The person who is the facilitator really needs to listen closely because you're going to hear a lot of interesting things said and um, to be able to say that back to the group when you're talking about changes they go through really, really hits home to them. Um, it's just it's just plain a lot of fun. And I hope you get a chance to use it. Again, you can just about any situation, everything we teach, we're asking people to, to make a change, whether they're going to start their food preservation differently, whether they're going to start parenting their children differently, whether they're going to start using any type of resource that we have. So it's, it's kind of one of those, um, it's like a rubber band, you can use it for a lot of things. And I hope you enjoy it. Great. And thank you, Molly, for stepping up and giving that a try. It's a, it's a good experience to to adapt it to something to be used across the state. So, okay. Our hour is about up, and I know there is another webinar with Julie. For those of you who need to attend that, and I see a couple people just saying they've got to go, and they're right. So if there's any other follow-up, email me. We'll take care of it. Thank you all very much for your time, and have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye. Bye, Deb.